Well, hello everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. I'm really excited to be part of the new December release blog hop from Simon Says Stamp. This is day two of the two day blog hop. Yesterday was filled with lots of inspiration and I encourage you to head on over to the Simon Says Stamp blog to see more ideas using the new December release products. Today I'm going to be using quite a few of the new products including the Sensational Snowflake Collage die and also the Sensational Snowflakes. Both of these work perfectly together and you can create some really fun, interesting card designs. I'm also going to be using some scraps of blue and teal card stocks as well as some of the new glitter paper from Simon's December release. Now this glitter paper is really fun because it comes not only in a variety of different colors, but the glitter on it does not rub off. It is a really great glitter paper and you don't have to worry about it making a big mess. So I'm going to start off by die cutting the Sensational Snowflake Collage die from a piece of Simon Says Stamp white cardstock. I'm going to cut this right down the center and this collage will create the snowflakes inside of that border. So I'll run this through my machine and you can see as I take this out how we have these negative areas that are little windows and then we've got these snowflakes attached to the entire piece. So you've got this one big piece of cardstock that has these beautiful snowflakes embedded into it. We're going to create some really fun effects by taking some scraps of cardstock and also some of the glitter paper and cutting each individual square of that snowflake collage die to create the negative pieces which we will then inlay into that big piece that we cut out from the white cardstock. Now all of the little frames, the snowflakes, I'm going to save those and I'm going to show you how you can use those to create some extra projects. So I've taken those scraps of blue and teal and glitter papers and I've cut that from every single one of the little squares of the snowflake collage squares. So now that I have those set aside, I'm going to pop up that big piece that has the collage cut from it over on top of a piece of scrap cardstock. Now I made sure when I cut the scraps of cardstock and also the glitter paper that I remembered which piece went with which square of snowflake because each snowflake square is a different shape. So we want to make sure that we use the right pieces and cut those from the right pieces of cardstock. So I'm going to start going ahead and inlaying all of these negative pieces that are going to create the backgrounds of my snowflake collages. Now you can make the process a little bit more simpler if you want to go ahead and just cut some scraps of cardstock into just some squares that fit behind those snowflake shapes. But I liked the inlay look better. I think it looks a lot cleaner and it also has a more interesting look. So I'm going ahead and doing the pro inlay process, but you can simplify this and make it a little bit easier on yourself if you go ahead and just cut some squares to pop behind here. It did take a little bit of time to cut all of these negative pieces and then fit them back into place, but I really think it's worth the end result. Now some of these negative pieces are quite small. And I found that the easiest way to get those really tiny pieces in place is to take a jewel picker or some sort of tacky tool that will allow you to pick something up like a quick stick tool and pick up those small negative pieces and then lay them into the negative areas that they belong in. Then you can take something like a little pin like I'm using here or a craft pick and then nestle those back into place. So now that I've finished inlaying all of my negative areas, I'm taking the sensational snowflakes. This is not the collage, these are just the snowflakes themselves. And I cut those from some of that same white cardstock from Simon's Stamp. I made sure to cut three of each individual snowflake and I'm going to layer those on top of the snowflakes that are in the collage. The sensational snowflakes and the collage are the exact same snowflakes, so these fit right on top of each other perfectly. I'm layering three of each snowflake on top of the snowflake that corresponds with the sensational snowflakes and the sensational snowflake collage dies. Once I've layered those all up, I've now got the inlaid pieces behind the snowflakes and I've also got the dimensional snowflakes on top of those inlay pieces, which creates a really neat dimensional effect. I also added some texture to the background by taking some of those same sensational snowflake dies and cutting them again from that, some of that same Simon White cardstock. And this time I'm putting one of each snowflake, so one layer of each snowflake, on top of my background. And that's creating a fun snowflake texture that is not distracting from the rest of the snowflakes in the card, but it ties everything together. I also further embellished the background by taking some beautiful jewels from Studio Katia 
and I'm layering these be in between the different snowflakes using a variety of different sizes. I used some glossy accents to attach those down because these are clear and I also did add a few more to the centers of each individual snowflake on that collage. Once I had my background done, I'm taking a piece of sea glass cardstock and I'm stamping a sentiment from the Merry and Bright stamp set onto that cardstock using some clear ink. Then I'll take some of the Sterling Brutus Moreau embossing powder and I'm gonna sprinkle that over top of that sentiment. Once I've stamped that down and applied the powder, I'll take my heat gun and melt the embossing powder to create a beautiful embossed sentiment. After that, I took my tonic trimmer and trimmed this down into a banner strip. The banner strip is about a quarter of an inch tall, maybe a little bit taller, and I just made sure to line this up straight in my tonic trimmer and eyeball where I was gonna go ahead and cut. I didn't precisely measure this. So that leaves me with this little sentiment strip which I can trim down the edges and then pop that up off of the panel. Finally, I took the entire piece and I layered that onto a sea glass cardstock card base and that's finishing up the entire card. Now I had, like I said, those leftover snowflakes from when I was cutting the scraps of glitter paper and also the cardstock, and I didn't want those to go to waste. So I went ahead and used those to create some little tags to coordinate with the card. Now because we die cut those with the Sensational Snowflake Collage, these are attached to the frames that are around them. So I trimmed those out with my fine tip scissors. They're not, not precise, but it works okay. Then I took also some leftover snowflakes that I had from creating my backgrounds for my card and I was able to use these to create some little tags. Now this tag die is from the new limited edition card kit that we just released and you can purchase this tag set separately. This is not exclusive to that kit. I took that and cut it from some surf blue cardstock and also some soft navy and I'm using that as the base for my snowflakes. I'm popping the snowflakes up and creating some really fun layers. I also had some little snowflakes left over from another project, which were from the Snow Flurry die set from Simon Says Stamp. It's a really fun set of really tiny snowflake dies. For the sentiment on each of these tags, I used one of the small sentiments from the Handmade Christmas stamp set, which I designed for the limited edition kit that just came out. This coordinates perfectly with the tag set. Within that stamp set, there's some really fun so small supporting sentiments, like this one here with lots of love. You could stamp that with one of the sentiments that says handmade. And I really like how you can really mix and match these sentiments to create some fun greetings on your tags, or you can use it for cards also. Now there's also some larger sentiments, like I said, in that stamp set that coordinates with the tag set. I used a couple of those as well, and I stamped these down in clear ink. I wanted to heat emboss the larger sentiments. So I stamped them in the clear ink, and then I again took that sterling silver embossing powder from Brutus Moreau and sprinkled that over top of each of the sentiments. I took my heat gun and heat set the sentiments to create that beautiful silver embossed finish. And then finally, I took some little embellishments from Lucy's cards. These are the bridal gem mix, and they come in a variety of different sizes. I used a couple of those on the centers of each of the snowflake layers. And for the strings that hang off of the tags, I used two layers of some red and white baker's twine, folded them in half, put the loop through the tag, and then brought the ends of those two strips of baker's twine and created a knot at the top of my tag. Then I tied another knot at the other end, and that creates a little hang tag that you could then put on a gift. I trimmed off the excess twine and repeated that process for every one of the tags here. These were very simple tags to put together, really quick and easy, and used up all of those scraps that I had left over from the card. Here you can see a couple of close-up pictures of the different variations of the snowflake tags, and I really like how these turned out. Now, there's also another card over on my blog that features some of the new December release products. I shared this a couple days ago, and I encourage you to either watch it at the end of this video, I'll have it linked, or you can head on over to my blog to find links to that video and information on how I created this card using more December release products. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will stop on over at my blog to take part in the December release blog hop. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending some time with me today. I will be back again soon with another video. And until then, thanks for watching.